Hey guys, my name's Tomasz Gop. I'm an executive producer at CI Games working on Lords of the Fallen, our action RPG that's been in development since 2011 and it's gonna come out this year on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. Let's roam a little bit around Old Monastery and in the meantime I'll tell you about some crucial ideas that drive the development of our game. The first few combat encounters you will see here focus around faster and agile opponents, so I'll try to use lighter gear and maneuver right, for example trying to get the perfect positioning and perfect timing for an effective critical strike. It requires a little bit of practice but is well worth the effort. The world we set the game within is very old and the legend has it that a couple thousand years ago People have fought and successfully defeated their god together with his demonic army and it's since then that they believe evil can be completely cast away from human nature. Each individual who commits a deadly sin is forever marked with a tattoo across the face, becoming an outcast for entire lifetime. Harkin, our hero, has a very dark past behind him and because of that, when the demons, or the rogers as we call them, started to reappear, he is assigned to face the threat. It's almost as if people believe that they can fight evil with evil. Oh, and by the way, it's worth mentioning that we really put a lot of work into highlighting the feeling of intense duel within each single one-on-one -on -one encounter that you will come across. Here this next enemy normally would not be much of a hassle because he's mainly attacking from a distance but surprise surprise there's a second one so we got ourselves into more or less a one versus two situation. If I want to be extra efficient in situations like this I always try to pull off a special dual wielding combo with the daggers. It requires the timing but the DPS is definitely worth the try. The game will also unlock new worlds for you to explore once you advance on the story path, but the ones you just left are not locked away from you. It's not only possible, but also very encouraged to re-explore the places you've already visited and the new areas will open up, presenting you with new loot and new opponents. This one here is a different type of opponent. He's bigger, stronger, more aggressive, but also he's not defending himself. So we'll try a different type of timing with this guy, using a heavier gear. Since we're not a slasher, certain things will not work, like moshing the button, for example. Um, blocking, well, that probably won't get you far in the long run. So let's set the pace right here. I'll get in, wait for a time to deal slower and stronger strike, then get out, rinse and repeat. It's quite useful with heavy weapons like this hammer and you can even charge the attacks. Another one bites the dust. Okay, let's jump straight into a boss fight now. This is going to be the first boss of the game. We call him First Warden. And we wanted him to resemble an honorable knight, uh, fighting and obeying his demonic codex. Gameplay-wise, our goal was to mix action with RPG in a way where all elements, including story, world and characters, revolve around the user experience. In our case, that means combat and character development. 
Basically, there are two main pillars of combat in Lords of the Fallen. Melee fighting and magical, supernatural skills. The first one is fairly tactical and rewards players who like the feeling of learning and that special sense of becoming proficient at game mechanics. The magical side of Lords Combat, on the other hand, even though it's not covered in this video, is designed to feel very spectacular and powerful. But that is also not the only reward that comes with using it. Our goal was to give players the means to distribute the process of learning how to play the game along the time they choose. You'll always be able to use magic at times when the difficulty spikes, so it's up to you if you want to use advanced strats instead. Especially if that might get you a better loot. There are three character classes that you can choose from at the start of the game. Warrior, Cleric and Rogue, and they will determine the set of spells that manifest your playing style. Apart from that, the statistics of a character, the gear that you want to use, can be freely mixed regardless of its suggested class association. For example, if you're more into heavy weapons but still want to keep that light rogue armor, there's no reason not to try this combination out. Or defensive play with a shield or an offensive dual weapon approach, they both can be mastered and become lethal with enough skill and persistence. The last stage of the First Warden fight is where it gets interesting because we finally managed to destroy the shield, making him a bit more vulnerable. At the same time, we pushed his aggression a little bit over the edge. If you remember not to get greedy and deal too much damage at too short amount of time, you can make it. Just please, try to avoid his special attack as it can stun lock you and of course, we wouldn't want that, would we? Thanks a lot guys, that's the first gameplay from Lords of the Fallen and of course there's way more to come so keep your eyes on our website and fun page, we want to make sure you know everything you wish about our game before it gets to your PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC.